Girls, I was dead and down in the underworld. A shade. A shadow of my former self. No one. It was a place where language stopped. A black full stop. A black hole where language had come to an end. And end it did there. Last words, famous or not. It suited me down to the ground. So imagine me there, unavailable, out of this world, then picture my face in that place of eternal repose, in the one place you think a girl would be safe from the kind of man who follows her around, writes her poems, hovers about while she reads them, calls her his muse, and once sulked for a night and a day because she comments on his weakness for abstract nouns. Just picture my face, ye gods, when I heard a familiar knock, knock, knock at death's door. Him. Big O, larger than life with his lyre, and a poem to pitch with me as his prize. Things were different back then for the men. Verse-wise, Big O was the boy. Legendary. The blurb on the back of his book claimed that animals aardvarked his zebra, flocked to his side when he sang. Fish leapt in their shoals at the sound of his voice. Even the mute sun stones at his feet wept wee silver tears. Bollocks. I don't know the typing myself, I should know. And rest assured, given my time again, I'd rather speak for myself than the dearest, beloved, dark lady, white goddess, etc, etc. In fact, girl, I'd rather be dead. But the gods are like publishers, usually male, and what you doubtless know of my tale is the deal. Orpheus strutted his stuff. The bloodless ghosts were in tears. Sisyphus sat on his rock for the first time in years. Tantalus was permitted a couple of beers. The woman in question could scarcely believe her ears. Like it or not, I must follow him back to our life. Eurydice, Orpheus's wife. To be trapped in his octaves and sectets, quatrains, couplets, limericks, elegies, myths. He'd been told that he mustn't look back or turn around, but walk steadily upward myself right behind him, into the upper air that for me was the past. He'd been warned that one look would lose me forever. So we walked. We walked, nobody talked. Girls, forget what you've read. It happened like this. I did everything in my power to make him look back. What did I have to do, I said, to make him see we were through? I was dead, deceased, resting in peace, passé. Late, past my sell-by date. I reached out my hand to touch him once on the back of his neck. Please let me stay. But already the light had saddened from purple to grey. It was an uphill schlep from death to life, and with every step I willed him to turn. I was thinking of filching a poem from his cloak pocket when inspiration finally struck. I stopped. Thrilled. He was a yard in front. My voice shook when I spoke. Orpheus, your poem is a masterpiece. I'd love to hear it again. He was smiling modestly when he turned. When he turned and looked at me. What else? I noticed he hadn't shaved. I waved once and was gone. The dead are so talented.